Okay, now we're dealing with uh, the exam paper, the latest exam paper, April 2019. So it starts off a little bit easy, then it gets tougher, you can see that. There's other questions there too. Um, and let's deal with the easy one first. I'm sure everybody is able to work this out quickly. Determine the value of a in f of x is equal to x cubed plus a x squared minus x plus 5 is divided by x minus 2 and gives a remainder of 23. It's only 3 marks here. Yeah? So we are not going to go and use long division. We can use long division, right, but it's going to take a bit too long. So we use the remainder theorem. So if, uh, if it's divided by x minus 2, then what value can I substitute here? 2. And what will the answer equal to? 23. So, yeah. so what it means is f of 2 is equal to 23. So we're going to go f of 2 equals to 23. Okay, that's what it means. When I substitute x into that equation, my remainder is 23. So, we have f of x is equal to x cubed plus ax squared minus x plus 5. So now I can substitute by 2. So wherever I see x, I'm putting 2 there, so that's a 2, 2, 2, and 2. Alright. So now, on the left hand side of this equation, I have f of 2. I can replace f of 2. What is f of 2 equal to? 23. So I can replace f of 2 with 23. Now the right hand side, 2 to the power 3 here. 8, 2 squared, that will be 4a there, minus 2, plus 5. So I only have one unknown there, which is a. So I've got 23 is equal to, I've got 8 minus 2, which is 6, plus 5, which is 11, plus 4a. So I've got 23 minus 11 is equal to 4a, which is going to be 12, is equal to 4a. So therefore, 12 over 4 is equal to a, so a is equal to 3. You've got that? Okay. Right, so this is dealing with the remainder theorem. Simple example. Right, it's just that you need to write out the statement properly. Okay. And then replace your f of 2 with the remainder. Okay, so now let's deal with a more difficult one. I'm going to move a bit faster. You need to do as many examples as possible. And I'm videoing this lesson here, so I'm going to put it up on YouTube so everyone can see this. Okay, this is the latest exam paper. Right, so simplify each of the following. Right, this one is seven bucks. So it involves factorization, multiplying, and uh, dividing of fractions. Okay. So let's see. What, what, what do you think we can do now? Yeah. If I multiply this completely, will it help me? Let's see. Right. So I'm just going to do it on one side here. So if I multiply y times x, I'm getting y x. If I multiply y times y squared, that will be y to the power 3. And then y times y will be, uh, so yeah, y times, that will be y x plus y to the power 3 plus y squared plus x. Okay, then from here, I need to go further and group it. But now, if you look at this term here, x plus y squared. If you just look, look at it carefully, then when you are multiplying, okay, if I can multiply y by the first two terms and then y by the second term, okay, in one step. So what I'm saying is I'm going to multiply y by x plus y squared, so that's going to be equal to y times x plus y squared. Okay, it's the same thing. y times x is y x. And you can see that y times y squared is 
my cube. But the way I'm writing it down now, why am I doing this? Because I notice there's an x plus y squared part of the question here. Can you see that? So definitely somewhere along it must cancel. So let's see now what's going to happen here. So I'm multiplying y times x plus y squared and then y times y which is y squared plus x. Okay, I could have done it there also, taken out a common factor. Okay, so now all divided by y plus 1. So now this division sign here, what can it change to? So division will change to multiplication because I'm div fraction divided by fraction. You change the sign of the bottom, I mean you change the division sign to multiplication and then swap numerator and denominator. So now I've got my y squared minus x squared, which I'm going to write on the top. But what do you notice here? There's a minus sign. This is the difference of two squares. So therefore, this can be factorized y minus x, y plus x. Okay. Now, okay, so now this is a quadratic trinomial here. So that's one, two, three terms. I'm going to write it in the denominator, but obviously I have to factorize it. Okay. So now, let's try and factorize this thing. Now, what do we do? How do we factorize this 4y squared minus 3xy minus 7x squared? Again, look for a clue in the question. They don't, they don't give you this here, nothing. Can you see that? Can you see the 4y minus 7x? So, most probably, it is one of the factors. Let's try and use it. Let's see what happens. So, this 4y minus 7x, let's write it as 4y minus 7x. Okay. So then if this is a 4y, and that's 4y squared, 4y times y must give you 4y squared. Okay, with that? Then, if this is a minus 7x squared, minus 7x times what? Times what will give you minus 7x squared? Times x. A, a negative times a positive must give you a negative. Now let's, let's make sure this is correct. So let's test it out. So we've got 4y minus 7x times y plus x. So if I multiply 4y times y is 4y squared. 4y times x is plus 4xy. Minus 7x times y is minus 7xy. Minus 7x times x is minus 7x squared. Okay, so I got my 4y squared. Then these are like terms because they both have x, y. Can you see that? So I can add the 4 minus 7, that will be minus 3 x, y minus 7 x squared. Was that what we had? Yes. So that is correct. So what did we do? We used the information that was given to us. Okay, to find the factors instead of doing it the long run. Now let's deal with this here. So we got times 4 y minus 7 x all divided by x plus y squared. Okay, so before we start cancelling, we need to deal with this part here. Can you see that? This is the only one that's not factorized fully. So, what do you notice? That I have x plus y squared and I have y squared plus x. So if I write down x here and y squared, they are not going to be changing the question in any way. So let me do that. So instead of y squared plus x, let me write it as x plus y squared, it's the same thing, it's like 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. We're just swapping those positions. Now, why did I do this? It's because I have an x plus y squared here, and I have x plus y squared there. Can you say that? So therefore, x plus y squared is your highest common factor there. So now, if I take out my x plus y squared as a common factor, so I'm taking out this, what am I left with now? Y is going to be y plus whatever is in front here, which is 1. All divided by y plus 1 times y minus x, y plus x, all divided by 
4y minus 7x and y plus x there times 4y minus 7x all divided by x plus y squared. Alright, so now it's, there's nothing more to factorize. Let's start cancelling. So what are we looking for? We're looking for a pair, something that's identical. One must be in the numerator, one in the denominator. It doesn't have to be directly above because it's multiplication. If you see one here and one there, that is a pair, you can cancel. Okay, so let's start cancelling. x plus y squared will x plus y squared. What else? Um, 4y minus 7x. 4y minus 7x. Oh, there's a chair, right here. But this one, this is y plus 1. y plus 1. y plus x. y plus x. And there's nothing else now. So therefore, this is equal to y minus x. Alright, so that was your second part question.